Hello, everybody, and welcome to Victoria Free. Did you know that this game is the third game in a series named after a woman who allegedly smelled quite bad? And much like the stinky compatriot from history, this game's a little stinky too. Now, I'm not claiming that Victoria Free might be the stinkiest of the games out there, Imperator, March of the Eagles, <laughs> maybe even Victoria 2 itself. Little bit of stink on that one. Now, this video will not be a scathing review of Victoria 3, but I will be having a few of my thoughts slip out. A lot of people seem pretty concerned about the warfare. After 0.5 hours, this guy's got it sorted. Do I think warfare is the worst part of this game? Hey, it's pretty bad. It's a little stinky. It's a got a bigger stanker coming off it, but is it the worst part of this game? No. <laughs> I mean, after 0 0.5 hours playtime, though, I mean, you gotta, you gotta hand it to um, They figured the game out. Uh, I don't really get the, the big argument about the war. Um, I think you, if you've played 0 0.5 hours and you've made your mind up about the war system, yeah, it's pretty bad, um, but that's... There's so much more to hate about this game. Come on, you gotta freshen it up a bit. And I'm just gonna say it straight up. I don't hate the game. I I hate Stellaris. <laughs> I'm deflecting. I game in like terrible. Six out of ten at best. Uh, I would say that, uh, that my biggest issue with this game though is that I can't move the little toy soldier around on the map. Uh, okay, quick. I left a comment saying I wasn't gonna play Vicky Free for the simple fact that uh, I didn't want to play it, and I definitely didn't want to take sponsorship for this game because I have integrity. Not when it comes to getting sponsored for Stellaris though. I still hate that, but for the money, I'm willing to sell my soul, but not for Vicky. Uh, you see, the problem with Vicky is I'm a big Vicky 2 fan. I have millions of views on my Vicky videos, and I'm sure I've brought a lot of you people to the series, which you've enjoyed. Now, would I take a Victoria free sponsorship down the line? Yeah, probably. But would I take a sponsorship for my first video when I had a lot of issues with the game? No. While I don't have a lot of integrity, <laughs> Stellaris sponsorship video, I do have a inkling of a soul left in this morsel of a body hollowed somewhere very deep inside. So as such, I didn't exactly want to do a sponsored video uh, straight away um, when I wouldn't be able to say all the things I want over like about the game and things that I really don't like about the game which I'm not gonna directly review today like I said I'm just gonna play the game and have a bit of fun so today for our Vicky free non review we're going to what I will be calling tutorial island welcome to the teat of the British Empire where we won't have to worry about a lot of things today as a lot of the things I have a issued with are actually nullified by the fact that we are in the British market leeching away and I'm gonna put a big emphasis on the word leeching away for what I'm gonna do today a big thing uh, people kept saying uh, that I was hearing on the internet is that they were upset that youtubers and twitch streamers um, were actually given early access and they weren't and they were fed up of seeing all these pre-release videos <laughs> uh, now I can't show anything for NDA reasons but believe me when I say that if your youtubers that you were complaining about even the uh, ones that you thought were only making stupid little videos like Bo Cohen 1 were not given early access, then I can guarantee you'd be having a wor much worse um, launch experience right now, as I think this game on the first patch we were given was crashing so much and was so unstable with so many glitches that we had the report, you'd probably have teared your own ears off and eaten them. Uh, now, I'm not going to say there ain't uh, any issues in the game right now that haven't been fixed. A few have, but a lot of them have already been reported. They just couldn't get fixed before release for a lot of bureaucratic reasons I assume behind the scenes. But as the glorious colony of New South Wales, because One South Wales wasn't enough, our first act is to simply go ahead and make ourselves a wonderful paradise for people to choose to move to. As such we'll be requiring egalitarianisms. POV, you are a barren wasteland filled with giant spiders. What do you do? Demand! No, we're not doing that just yet. Instead, we'll bind our time by making them think we actually like them. Uh, and we'll also start improving relations with our other colony friends in Australia, because eventually we will want to eat them. Uh, also, here's a fun little thing you never knew that you wanted in Victoria Free. Uh, if you actually press the uh, tap button, 
it zooms you out. It's pretty cool, right? So one of the biggest issues people obviously have is the no warfare. Um, we won't have to worry about that as Australia. Uh, there's no one to go to war with here. All right, first off though, we will be getting the intelligence, the, the smart people in government. We're gonna need them for a few laws we want passing. In fact, uh, we're also gonna want the conservative party in here too to get our legitimacy all the way up. And then from there, because we can't get the law that I want just yet, we're gonna go for colonial resettlement. Now, to start federating Australia and bringing everyone together into one big Australian banquet uh, requirements here, uh, we need to have nationalism, the UK needs to like us, we need to have more GDP than our other colonies, and we need to have high relations with them, which we can do pretty easily. Uh, now, being in the British market means that people will move around a lot in that market if there are jobs available, which <laughs> it sounds fun, right? <laughs> Uh, it's not very fun, uh, but it does mean that we can pretty much build whatever we want without fear of ever lacking workers Especially as Australia's we're gonna get a lot of migration draw anyway, which means for now uh, I'm just gonna spam a few textile mills for the most part. We're just waiting until we uh, we have Gold we need gold give me gold. All right, so we're lacking in population. We've got 337,000 people right now, but that will grow and we can promote it even further uh, by first removing our consumption tax on grain and then taking all the authority we just got from that and bringing it onto a little thing called greener grass campaign, which will give us migration draw in colony. Uh, now obviously getting rid of grain tax mean money go down. Money not looking very good right now. Taxes go up. Everyone not very happy. Army? Not needed. Why can't I move unit? Now, as Australia, our economy can't quite handle expanding too quickly, which means we are going to be building very slowly. Uh, but we, it will roll into something a lot bigger much later. And as you can see already, we got quite a few peasants who need work. Now, passing laws is probably <laughs> one of the most infuriating systems in the game for the simple fact every time you simply roll the chance for it to pass. If you fail, you get a chance at having a debate. If that goes your way, which it very clearly didn't this time, you may get a little bit of a fist up the anus. So immediately our colonial resettlement could go from a extra minus 50% colony growth speed and then a, an enactment time of an extra 20%, which isn't too bad because we do have full legitimacy in our government. Or we can go ahead and just get some political movement support and some radicals, which is much better in my opinion because we have nobody living in this damn country to be radical anyway. Uh, but if you get a bad reroll on this uh, law passing it can go pretty badly for you and uh <laughs> now, as you can see here in your game, usually if you weren't in a market like I am right now, you'd have to be looking exactly what you're missing in terms of your economy. But I really don't have to do that as I am at the teat of the British and the British will provide all of my needs. But as you can see, the British market does need a lot of stuff. So we can go ahead and capitalize on exactly what has a high price and is in need. You get it? Capitalize. Economy? Capitalists? Victoria was a stinky queen! And as we can see right now, there are a few things that are in demand, like tea. Tea would be a good one for us, as we have a lot of peasants that will go in the fields to get the tea, and we can sell it to the British. We can also go ahead and do clothes. Clothes are very much needed, pretty much throughout the entirety of the game, I may add. And they go for a, a decent price. Not exactly the best price, as compared to tea, but uh, they will be pretty good for us. Uh, you know how I told you the passing law system isn't very fun? Well, this is why. Here, immediately, we're getting ourselves some enactment success chance. It's really gonna prolong this law passing. We're now down to 6%. So we've actually maxed out our reserves right now, which means we just have money that's sitting there doing nothing, which means we need to start spending it. So what I'm actually gonna do is uh, develop our construction 
construction sector a little bit more so we can build faster. Alrighty, so our first textile mill is up and running, so the people will get to work. I've also put dye workshops on it because we can get all of the goods we need from the British on this one, and we could also go ahead and make luxury clothes from it, which I'm not going to do because uh, it requires silk, and that'll become an issue much later. Uh, it also means that later on down the line, uh, we could just change it, of course, if we want to go ahead and produce luxury clothes, but I still want to focus on making just normal clothes as it will also fill our own pop's needs. And as you can see, I'm already completely burning through my reserves right now, just building a extra construction sector, so you definitely don't want to go to ham on it. Alright, so Colonial Affairs unfortunately has been a catastrophic failure for us, but we'll try and come back to it later. But for now, we're going to go ahead and do multiculturalism, which hopefully will have a bit more luck with. Multiculturalism will be great for us and will bring way more people over, which will in turn funnel our economy from just producing tea to maybe actually being relevant. Uh, so as you can see, we already have quite the migration attraction all over Australia and our population has gone up to 500k, which isn't too bad. <laughs> and unlike our colonial resettlement, we're getting quite lucky passing multiculturalism. Alright, so we finished our nationalism technology, which means we can now click our journal entry in the uh, decisions tab over here to start federating Australia, which means, boom, we've just eaten Western Australia. Uh, now, unfortunately, we can't spam the button to do this as there is a two-year cooldown, I believe, uh, to actually keep getting the next colony. So I guess we'll wait patiently. And uh, I'm still waiting for this to go ahead and pass. We're at 56% now. If it does not pass, I may throw myself out of a window. Okay, finally it passed. Boom, we now have multiculturalism. Way more people are going to come to the country and they're going to love it. You never seen a kangaroo before? What about a kangaroo fighting a jaw spider? And now can we get the elusive colonial resettlement law done? So our population's going up and our economy is also going up um, in a very weird fashion. And there you go, first, we first wave of immigration coming to Australia! Uh, so those events will pop up quite a lot, and when they do pop up, you will get a sudden influx of a lot of people migrating to whatever province it says. Uh, so as you can see, we have a migration target, and a lot of people of the U culture are turning up. And as you see from our population growth in our province right there, um, they are they are very quickly turning up. Oh, and we also just got our colonial resettlement pretty easily there. Wow, that's the most luck I've had in about 20 plus hours of gameplay. Uh, now, colonial resettlement is very good because once again, in any state that we have not actually integrated, we get a extra 100% colonial migration. <laughs> it's insane. So in like Western Australia, where I've still yet to incorporate this state, uh, we can now have a even bigger draw for migration as the Franco-Canadians start turning up. Yeah. It does get a little bit complicated on the culture map mode though, as Australian has now been overtaken by the U, <laughs> uh, which also comes into one of the issues of the game, where because I'm in the British market, anyone that turns up in my country also can turn up in the rest of the market, so that uh, if the migrants turn up in my country over here, they can then move <laughs> to the next province over if there are available jobs in the same market. <laughs> oh. Welcome the Kazakh people to Queensland. You'll fit in with the U. Oh, we got the hacker. Okay, we got a lot of people moving very quickly and it's about to get even more as we just got a gold rush in Victoria. <laughs> Now, gold rush is great and crucial to our Australian economy, as when these gold fields run dry, they will leave behind a gold mine. Uh, also, because we passed our colonial resettlement, we will now start colonizing the provinces around us. So, uh, unfortunately, the British did get uh, a bunch of the South Island there, but it doesn't matter as we'll try and snipe the rest of it. Uh, now, there is no notification for um, this journal decision, by the way, so you do have to keep remembering to check it, or else you won't annex all your little friends around you, and as you can see, I just got the North Island there in New Zealand. Oh my god, okay, that 
<laughs> that is a lot of <laughs> a lot of draw to Western Australia. All right, we're making a lot of money as well now. So once again, I'm going to expand the construction center so we can build more in spec and more in line with how much we're actually making here. Oh, there you go. We got ourselves another gold rush. So that's more migration attraction. And we have, <laughs> we, we absolutely destroyed that 1 million population mark very quickly. Uh, as you can see, we are colonizing the Noongar who, as you can see from their flag, are actually avant-garde Danish people. All right, that was pretty lucky. A gold field has depleted, which means it's gone, which is good. It'll lower our migration attraction a little bit, but in turn of that, we will be able to build a gold mine. I actually got that pretty early, which is very, very lucky. Um, I'm not too sure if you're going to get that lucky in your playthrough if you do this, but uh, yeah, very lucky. Uh, now, you may be asking exactly why I'm not too happy about the fact we do have gold fields, which gold fields are good, but with gold mines, we can actually make them way more efficient by upping their production methods and giving them better equipment, which I may sound happy about, but in reality, I hate this system beyond belief. Having to micromanage all of this stuff throughout your entire game means you're going to be staring at this screen for the rest of your life. Enjoy it and hope it goes well. Uh, and in fact, our gold mines will become even more efficient when we get ourselves dynamite, which we will need nitroglycerin for. Uh, now, we could just go ahead and change their production to nitroglycerin as soon as we get it, but um, as you can see, they just blow themselves up. So so we're going to wait for the safer alternative, which is dynamite, where they won't blow themselves up. Oh, God, look at the uh, the population square over here. <laughs> it's, got a, it's got a lot of random people just living in Western Australia. <laughs> And there you go, we've confederated uh, Tasmania down here. So we just have South Australia left and then we have essentially made Australia and we can indeed go ahead and actually form the Australian nation. And the Australian nation is a, uh, apparently also a subsidiary of the Kazakh nation. There are so many Kazakhstani people. <laughs> Right, I'm going to keep trying to get the intelligentsia very happy by uh, trying to pass universal suffrage, which we don't have a very great chance of doing, but hopefully we get lucky. Oh, and more gold rush straight to Tasmania, which uh, that's good for us. And uh, I haven't incorporated these guys either, so they will get the absolutely insane migration buff, which um, is it's insane. Ah, the Uyghurs have arrived. <laughs> Oh man, <laughs> not the Mongols. Oh my god, okay, we're getting very lucky. I have done a couple playthroughs of Australia and I have not gotten this lucky getting gold fields at all. Uh, so yeah, you do want your gold fields to deplete ASAP, which uh, they have done, which means we get the gold mines, which means way more money. So much money, in fact, my government <laughs> administration bills have been put very much on the back burner. Uh, yeah, which means we ain't really taxing too much over here or getting any government administration done at all. <laughs> We're just uh, and capping it up, baby. Oh, there you go. We've hit the two mil population mark, and as you can see from a cultural overview, uh, it's a bit of a war right now between the Kazakhs and the Mongols as to who's going to be the primary culture over here. I mean, can you imagine uh, Australians? throat singing. <laughs> oh, so I think the British actually hit their decision to um, federate Australia. They also get the same one where they can give us land, which means uh, they've given us South Australia now, which means in turn we can also go ahead and form Australia ourselves soon. Well, whenever we get Western Australia, which is very slowly being colonized. Okay, we just got another gold mine depleted and that is another level six gold mine on the way. The creepy... Aren't those Native Americans? Yeah, the Native Americans are coming to Australia. All right, trying to, like, decipher just how many different cultures are living in Western Australia is beginning to be a little bit difficult. <laughs> uh, now, a lot of the issues I do have, Vicky Free, um, aren't being emphasized too much in this playthrough. For the simple fact, they're pretty negated from the playthrough entirely. Uh, but... Albeit, uh, this migration might look good, but you can do this as pretty much any country, which is not a good thing. Like, any country can do this. Like, right now, the UK is 
in a way, doing it in Southern Ireland as they have colonial resettlement. It's a little bit dumb. <laughs> Let's just have a look. It looks like the Croatian people are moving to the middle of Paris. <laughs> now, I'm not saying the migration in Vicky 2 was any way better. It was limited to the New World only, but I have seen some very wacky outcomes to um, the migration stacking in this game. Oh, and well, here come the Afro-Americans fleeing America. Uh, but a few more issues that we do have is the fact the AI is pretty much brain dead. Yep, that's the border of the US right now. Uh, you see a lot of issues with Prussia trying to form North Germany. A lot of the time they can get stuck in endless wars. I've seen them get stuck in a war with Hamburg over here because they couldn't figure out naval invading them. So they were just permanently at war with Hamburg for the rest of the game until I tagged over and freed them from their eternal pain. Uh, of course, a lot of people complain about the war, but the war really isn't a big issue when I think the core fundamental of the game, in a game where you can quite literally map paint like any other game, is that it's way more viable just to sit in this screen the entire game. Uh, you're essentially playing a glorified Anno 1800 game um, in a menu. <laughs> I think pretty much the only times you'd ever really look for expansion is when you've capped out your GDP and you have no more workers. Only then can you right click on another nation, open a play and puppet them entirely. Uh, of course a lot of people will just enjoy the green line goes up simulator but I think Vicky2 really emphasized a bit more of the geopolitical aspect of the Victorian era which this game the Sorbs are migrating to South Australia. And of course, because I'm in the British market right now, I don't really have to worry about procuring the goods needed to fund my industry. I don't really have an industry, it's all gold, but there will be an industry here for the most part. As if I wasn't in the British market, I'd have to be dealing with the Australian market, which wouldn't have access to all of these goods, and I would have to manually go around trading and exploiting, which is a bit of a micromanagement pain. Here come the Baluchi people to New South Wales! I hope you guys know that I'm <laughs> I don't have jobs for you yet. Yeah, I think the uh, gold mines down in Tasmania are turning the population <laughs> a bit snobby. <laughs> oh, for a while there, I forgot that I was even under your thumb, Great Britain, but I'd be happy for you to take on my debt, even though uh, there's actually... Not really a lot of it, but thanks anyway. Well, it looks like we have started integrating the Mongolians into the Australian culture, but uh, we've still got a bit of Kazakh and Afro-American over here. Oh, the Serbians are coming. Hopefully they fit in with their other pals, the Sorbs. Ah, uh, yes. How Australia was meant to be. <laughs> there you go, I finally colonized the rest of Australia, and now we can go ahead and click the button and become Australia. Oh, and that means we are now a dominion of the British, so we get way more in terms of uh, diplomacy to meddle around with, not that I'm going to. But uh, I guess my alliance with Hawaii is something. All right, we just got dynamite, which is going to knock up, oh my god, an extra 9.5k in minting from our gold mines. That is insane. All right, so we're already running into the issue of the colonial problem in Victoria 3. Uh, you see, even though I have an extra 150% right now bonus in our state for colonial migration, a lot of them are leaving because there are better places to go, apparently. I mean, we're literally having 1,000 people just move to other places in the market, but also, as you may or may not notice, that France is looking very green. And that means they are getting a lot of different people just move on over there. Um, yeah. Well, it's not entirely random. It's down to the fact that the standard of living in France is actually better, <laughs> like a lot better, because they are number one GDP. Yep. Uh, the Victorian era is now the Felipe <laughs> era. Yeah, in the release patch, uh, France just absolutely tramples the competition when it comes to GDP. They build like no other. I mean, they they are 100 mil above the British right now. Uh, it wasn't like this in the patch beforehand that we got, but uh, ever since they tweaked it a bit, France... 
the ghost sicko mode. And our population is still increasing, but we are losing a lot of people to migration, which is a big problem. Uh, it is slowing our growth down a little, but as long as we get more people in the workforce and don't have 100,000 unemployed peasants and 50,000 unemployed people, uh, I think they'll come back. The Sorb traitors are moving to Futtenberg. Even though I'm doing my best to get the standard of living up, uh, for the most part it is going up. I've managed to get the lower Shrada now up to middling, <laughs> getting it on par with what the French are currently doing with their endless GDP pumping is a little bit hard. <laughs> yeah, it's looking very green, uh, albeit their lower class ain't looking too good, but we're trying our best. I mean, our upper class and middle class though are doing very well, mostly down to the fact, I imagine, from those damn gold mines which are just pumping money into them. He's living too much of a good life. Oh, a obligation for backing them against Siak. Uh, you know what, UK? I'm gonna take that obligation. Uh, yeah, here comes the <laughs> World War China. Hey, look, Britain, I'm helping. Can you viewer decipher what the hell's going on in any of this? Because I sure as hell can't. I'm over there somewhere with Mr. <laughs> Charles Cobcroft. <laughs> Not a very Serbian name, is it? Whilst attempting to colonize this island, a war has broken out between me and the natives, and Mr. Cobcraft himself has uh, arrived to deal with the situation. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> uh, I'm sure Mr. Cobcraft has it sorted, though. I just officially overtook Russia in GDP in 1878, and I'm on my way to top the Americans. Oh my god, I am sending 66,000 pounds over to the British. <laughs> oh god. Oh my god, if you look at gold right now, I am the number one producer by a long, long shot. Good thing there's no inflation in this video game. <laughs> it looks like we're getting some of our migration uh, back now, mostly from our standard of living going up. I am imagine, but uh, it also appears that a lot of the French one went down, which I'm not too unhappy about, but the American one's also going up, which could be a problem, uh, especially down to the fact Australia just overtook them in GDP. That's right. The most successful British colony, <laughs> Australia. 1880 and the North Germans have almost formed all of North Germany. Uh, but you may be asking, do the Egyptians hold Istanbul? Yes, in fact, they very much do. <laughs> uh, there is a bug at the moment where uh, if you're a tiny state and you launch into a revolution, um, you're so tiny that in fact you can't ever end your revolution as... <laughs> Neither of you are powerful enough to do it. <laughs> so you're just in an endless war. Uh, so as you can see, uh, Brain's in one right now. And we got another one over here. And I usually notice them in the uh, colonies as well. Oh, there's another one down there. Yeah, it happens quite a bit. Oh, looks like we're getting the old Mexican-American diplomatic play. I wonder if they'll actually manage to reach the West Coast <laughs> this time. I, it's time. I'm launching the diplomatic play to make Madagascar a dominion of me. It looks like they brought the uh, Portuguese in on this and I have the Dutch and they allied with me, so we'll see how this goes. I say see how it goes, uh, we'll see how to figure out how to enable them, babe. There we go, click the button and off we go, maybe? <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> He arrived, and it did not go very well. <laughs> oh, okay, thankfully, looks like the Dutch managed to get in there, so we should be fine. There we go. We're advancing the front now and absolutely decimate him. He kind of looks like one of my CK3 characters I'd make. But yeah, isn't this uh, riveting war gameplay absolutely fantastic? Oh, uh, I, guess, I guess I won. There we go. I have subjugated the kingdom. That's a cool flag. <laughs> there they go. I'm a dominion and I have my dominion too. The Swiss people are off to Algeria. Oh, the British aren't going to take Brunei. I guess I'll send uh, good old Stafford Stewart over there. Proud Serbian man. Oh my god. Among Us. Truly a great game. Oh, during my invasion at the Zulu. I have overtaken Great Britain 
in GDP. Take that, daddy. Uh, what's actually much more important though is I actually have the GDP per capita in the world. I'm number one, <laughs> which means my people are living it up. Uh, what's more funny is the UK has a population of just under 50 million. I have 18 million and I just overtook their economy. What I'd uh, give a little Japanese invasion ago, and it's actually going incredibly well. They do have the Austrians on their side, but yeah, ain't helping. Well, um, if you ever wanted to know what an Australian British <laughs> Dominion of Japan would be like, now you know. All right, well, that, I think uh, it's definitely safe to say uh, we've done enough here today. You know, after... Oh, my God, I just... Nice! So you may ask, do I think Vicky Free is good? No, I don't. Do I think it's terrible? No, I don't. Do I recommend you buy it right now? No. Which is why... I think this game needs a bit more time in the oven, maybe an extra year or two, uh, which is the big problem with a lot of the features. It feels like a bit too much of everything all at once, but nothing is 100%. The economy and trade system is both basic and incredibly overcomplicated, hidden in different menus. There's a whole bunch of tooltips that don't really explain the problems with what you may be facing in your quote-unquote economy. No real unique play style, especially in single player, as I think the majority of the time you're just going to be building the same stuff, and reality is if you're in a menu for 80% of the game simply clicking a expand factory button or changing the production type, is that really fun for you? Not for me personally. I think the majority of people might find it pretty interesting right now, having a lot to explore and learn about the game, but the more you learn, the less there really is to it, especially in terms of replayability. Personally, I've played a couple of nations already, and I feel like I've seen it all. A lot of the flavor for nations just isn't there or is straight up broken, like in the case of the US. Uh, a lot of the economies tend to end up intertwined to a point that it doesn't really matter and you can just exploit your way through the AI and their inadequacies to build what they need to build. In other games that Paradox have made, you always know that the AI can be somewhat of a threat or at least play some part of the game that you are also playing, but the reality in this game is the AI probably won't ever touch you and would sit there and build a level 308 tool workshop. Thank you, France.